Hello. Riverside. Yep. Okay, thank you. We don't have to put Amy's name on there. Hello. Yes, we do. Yep, we have uh, 703. Give her the paper. It's got a license plate on it. This has our license plate on it and all the uh, everybody's names. Yes, she is. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> There's two trailer dump stations at Pinery, one on the way to Riverside Park and one right near the entrance of the entire park. Uh, we went to the one near Riverside because uh, when we arrived at the park, it was really busy. Big lineup at the uh, first dump station. Good thing for us though, it is a threaded end so we can easily attach our uh, black water flush and it is nicely sloped to go down into the hole. The fresh water, uh, it is also threaded so we can attach our filter to it. It's threaded right here, so we're filling it up. This park is huge. There's 1,077 sites, both 50-50 electric and non-electric. And there's three campgrounds, Riverside, Burley, and Dunes. We're in Riverside. Dunes is 142 electric sites and 157 non-electric. Riverside has 354 electric and 84 non-electric. And Burley has 303 sites and they are all non-electric. Now let's get into everything that this park does have because it has a lot. Here we go. There's nine kilometers of beaches. There's 10 group sites, 16 comfort stations. And these flush toilets everywhere. There's 10 trails totaling 17 kilometers. 12 yurts, one cabin, one deluxe yurt, 38 kilometers of cross-country ski trail. There's a camp store and there's a restaurant. Wait, what? A restaurant? There's an ice cream shop. There's bicycle and canoe rental. They're on bicycles, tandem bicycles, bicycles built for two, bicycle trailers. They rent canoes, kayaks, kayaks for two, pedal boats, and hydroplane bikes for the water. You have the old Ozable Channel for your paddle sports and you've got Lake Huron for your beach. There's a visitor center and it even has a little movie theater in it and an amphitheater. Whew. This park has it all. Okay, sit. Down. Good boy, let's go. So this is this Thanksgiving weekend in Canada. We decided a few years ago that for Thanksgiving, we tried to do something a little different, a little fun. And uh, we decided to go camping for Thanksgiving. Kids got older, they're all adults now, and uh, we wanted to bring everybody together. And instead of getting together at somebody's house, making a big mess there, and making a big production of the dinner and everything, we decided to come camping, and uh, we can do a little simpler. We can have a beautiful turkey dinner while camping, and uh, have a nice fire, spend the weekend together. It's an excellent way of doing it. So the way that the park is laid out, there's three campgrounds, like I said earlier. There's Dunes, Burley, and Riverside. Burley is the non-electric campground, and it's mostly for tenters. You do see the odd pop-up or small travel trailer, but uh, like I said, there's no electricity, so it's usually tenters. Then you have Dunes. Dunes is a mixture of electric and non-electric, so you'll have a mixture of tenters and people with trailers. Generally, in Dunes, you don't have... Uh, large trailers or any motorized RVs. Um, they're smaller roads, uh, so it's a lot of pop-ups, hybrids, and small travel trailers. The best part about Dunes and Burley, both campgrounds are very close to the beach. Riverside is for the bigger RVs, bigger travel trailers, Class A, Class C. They have some pull-through sites. They also have all the yurts, and the cabin uh, in the winter time 
the only campground that's open is area one in Riverside because that's where all the yurts are. People generally stay in the yurts during the winter time. Each of the three campgrounds is divided into four areas. Each area has its own comfort station as well as several, uh, well, I would call them vault toilets, but they're not really the regular flush toilets situated throughout the park. There are nine day use beaches. Each day use beach has its own parking lot and three of them have comfort stations. So I'm trying to do this uh, little narrative here while walking Kingston, but Kingston kind of has his own idea. Keeps stopping and sniffing and he's a male dog, so he's got to mark everything. So this takes a little while and I do have a little bit of strain trying to hold on to him. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. This place is awesome in the winter time. We stayed here uh, several years in a row uh, during the winter, staying in a yurt. Yurt's wonderful. It's very well insulated. Has uh, a couple of bunk beds in it, as well as a table and chairs, electric heating, has a uh, wooden deck, and uh, on the wooden deck is a barbecue, uh, natural gas powered barbecue. You don't have to worry about propane tanks. So it's, uh, it's a great thing. They have cross-country skiing and snowshoeing. And for the kids, what we love doing is they have a great big tobogganing hill. You have to bring your own sleds at the bottom of the tobogganing hill. They have an ice skating rink. Again, bring your own skates. Right next to the uh, tobogganing hill and ice skating, there's a chalet with a uh, wooden stove inside. You can go in there, warm up, have your lunch, make some hot chocolate on the uh, wood stove. It is a really good time. Kids love it. When you get up in the morning there and you go for your hike, you get out of your yurt, nice fresh layer of snow is down. You can see all the tracks that the animals left overnight. You can see where the deer have been sleeping overnight as all the snow is packed down in that area. Uh, and then head down to the beach and see the ice mountains that have been formed by the waves. It's a really nice experience, a very unique experience. It's something you really need to try. The waterfront sites along the river and riverside campground, uh, area number four, really nice large sites right onto the water. You can put your canoe or kayak right in from the site. They are premium sites, a little more money, but well worth it. This is a really nice waterfront site. Has a nice trailer on it too, Coachman Freedom Express. Good taste in trailer. So we were just approached by some of our loyal viewers. That was awesome. I'm so glad they approached us and introduced themselves to us. Uh, they say they watch us all the time on Camping with the Coles. So that was really great to meet people like that. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we didn't get their names. Maple's but, family. Yep. Maple is their cool little dog. Oh, honestly, we <gasps> love, we love watching him. Hey, Maple. Say hi. 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 <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks. This here is my 
soon to be son-in-law Eric. He's the crazy guy that jumped in the water with me at the beginning of this video. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. <laughs> this is Thanksgiving 2020, COVID style. Got the Coles family over here. Got the Salada family over here. Hi, Saladas. If I'm going to give you an honest review of the park, I have to tell you about the negatives. And there's definitely two big negatives. Number one is poison ivy. It's everywhere. Most of the sites are lined by it. Look at our site right here. All that's poison ivy. It's all around the campsite. And it's like that around most campsites in the park. And the other big negative are ticks. In the past few years, the tick population at Pine Provincial Park has exploded, including the tick that carries Lyme disease, the black-legged deer tick. Just yesterday, we picked nine ticks off of our dog, Kingston. Several of them were embedded in him and feeding off of him. So we had to use tweezers and pull them out. And also yesterday, our friend Sue had a tick on her arm that was feeding on her. We had to take that out. Every one of us at some point during this weekend had seen ticks on them. Uh, most of us brushed them off before they started to uh, bite in and start feeding on us. But this is something you really have to worry about, something you have to take precautions for, because there are a lot of ticks in this park. And here's one of the joys at the uh, Thanksgiving season when you go camping. At the very end of the long weekend, especially on a beautiful weekend like this where the park was packed, you get the line up to the dump station. Luckily, we're only uh, number seventh in line. This is the Riverside Dump Station. It has uh, one dump spot and one potable water fill-up spot. Then there's the other dump station closer to the entrance of the park. It has uh, same thing, one dump station and one potable water fill-up. So we're waiting at this one. They do a good job at the park. They have a uh, park warden here helping to direct traffic. He's keeping track of what's going on at the other dump station and making it so that one isn't uh, packed with a big lineup and the other one's empty, they try to even it out. Well, this is a very sad time for us. It could be our last Ontario Park Campground review for season number two, uh, but we have season number three to look ahead to, and it isn't just gonna be the, uh, the end of our videos uh, until next season. We also uh, we put out some more videos I'm going to be doing one product review for a tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, we're also going to be doing another campfire cooking with Cheryl. And uh, probably I'll put out a uh, recap of season number two. So there's still a few videos to come. But uh, for now, this is our last trip and this is our last Coles notes of season number two. Thanksgiving 2020. Originally with the Pinery, like I've said before, we have been coming to this park for years and years, and I actually had plans to give it a five-star rating. I love this park. There's so many amenities. There's so much to do. I just love it. 
but something is preventing us from making it a, a five-star review. And over the past few years, it's been getting worse and worse. Tell them what it is, Cheryl. It's not necessarily the actual park itself. It's the fact that tick situation seems to have increased. Just this past weekend, we experienced a horrendous amount of ticks. Our poor dog, we removed 12 ticks from him. Um, and plus flicking off ticks off ourselves. They fall from the trees, they're in the grass. You can't really escape them. Um, and poison ivy, well that's always been rampant through firing. Yeah. And it's not a huge deal because you know where it is and how to avoid it, the tick situation. Yeah, the tick situation is very tough to avoid. And uh, Pinery is known to have the black-legged deer tick, which is the tick that carries Lyme disease. So you always got to keep it in the back of your mind uh, and you have to be cautious. Uh, Sue had one on her arm. Well, that, she uh, is very diligent, 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 diligent. <laughs> she wears long sleeves, long pants, tucked into socks, shoes, and she still had a tick on her arm, which I had to remove. So we have that in a container. Yeah. So that means that we can't rate it five stars because or five trailers because uh, you have to take that into account and if you're worried the whole time you're there you're worried about getting Lyme disease you're worried about getting a tick bite you're worried about uh, getting poison ivy um, then that takes away from the enjoyment of the trip we still had a great time we still love the park I'm hoping in the next few years uh, nature can find some way to figure out how to control this tick population. Just as they've had the bad uh, caterpillar situation during what, May, June, July. Yeah, that was at Pinery too. But the good stuff, we love all the stuff they have there. Um, Tons of beaches. Yeah, the, the beach, it's nine kilometers of beach. You just go west and you're gonna hit a beautiful beach. Beautiful sunsets, it's Lake Huron, very nice. And then, uh, it's really nice that it has the uh, river, the Ozable Channel. It's awesome that it has that, because um, that's where you can do uh, the kayaking and canoeing and that sort of stuff. So it has a lot of different uh, stuff. The uh, the trails, they're basically a nice walk in the woods, but they do have uh, a lot of nice walks in the woods along there, uh, and a lot of the trails you can take your bicycles on. So. Uh, that's that's uh, always a fun thing to do. Yeah, bikes are a good thing to have. It's a large park. You definitely need bikes. So I guess we can't give it a five star. And so I guess we're going to go with our old standard. <laughs> four? Four. Trailers. Yep, we're trailers. giving it four trailers. <laughs> now, our daughter Allison here <laughs> has pointed out that uh, our trailer star system uh, it has a little more to be desired uh, because we gave everything a four this season. Um, and I understand that. It would be good to have four and a half, uh, you know, four and three quarters or 4.6 or something like that. So maybe we'll look at that for next season, try to make it a little more specific. But really, every part we went to this season, we enjoyed. We didn't have a dud this season. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was great. So all in all, it was a very good season, even though it was a shortened season because of COVID. And there's a lot of things that uh, you couldn't do. Well, we could do a lot of the things. We bring our own kayaks with us. We have our own washroom with us. But uh, for tenters and people that don't have their kayaks or canoes, they can't rent them. The comfort stations are closed. You can't use the showers. So uh, that's for this season. Next yeah. season, hopefully we'll be back running as normal. Keep your fingers crossed. Anyway, that's it for us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you enjoyed the whole season. Uh, you can have a look back at season number one, see the parts that we uh, did last year, and we're looking ahead to season number two. We're going to explore a whole bunch of new parts that we haven't been to before and hopefully we get a full season. So let's start planning. Let's do it. We can start booking in two months. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye. Oh, wait, one last oh, thing. Bye.
I'm also going to be doing a uh, winterizing your trailer video. Oh, that's important. That's a good one. You're going to want to watch that one. You want your trailer to be safe over the winter time. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.